Hello Braille class, today we're going to be recapping the sound OO, focusing on spelling and extending our sentences. So let's have our revised our sound from Friday. O oh, for row your boat slow. Split diagraph E. Oi, so these are sounds that we've learned before but I've put them in today. R. A. E. O or O. Uh. O, ch, qu, sh, split diagraph, I, e, I, fantastic. Now we're going to see whether we can revise some of our words. So remember, thinking time first, when I push it forward, see if you can say that word. Just, house. One of our common exception words this time, so think about which bit's tricky. One. So the word one, spelled like this, means one thing or number one. And the bit that's tricky is this O, oh, because you can hear the W at the beginning, but there is no W in that word. So we just say the word one, but we can't segment it, because if we segmented it, we'd be doing the split diagraph O, N, own. And we know own is a word, like I own this jumper, but we know we don't spell it like that. So the word is one, as in one thing. Oh, another one of those tricky ones. Remember, think first when I push it forward. Little, fantastic. The bit that's tricky in this one is the e at the end is silent. So we don't segment it, oh, it, oh, eh, little eh. We don't say it like that, we don't pronounce it like that. The word is little, E is silent. Fantastic. So let's see now whether you can write some of those words and spell them correctly using your nicest handwriting. So can you write the word house? House. So think about what sounds are in the word house. Remember, pause that video and then let's see whether you got it right. House. H-O-U-S-E. House. Well, I don't know if you got it right. Next one, can you spell the word one, as in one thing? Miss Bailey had one more thing to do before she could go home. The word is one. See if you can pause the video. Let's see whether you're right. O-N-E. Well done if you were. Next word. Just. Just. Pause the video. Let's see whether you spelled it right. J-U-S-T. Brilliant. The last one. Little, quite a big one. Remember what sign's on the end. Remember, pause the video. Let's see if you were right. Little, L I T T L E, that naughty E on the end. Well done. Remember, if you want to challenge yourself, you could write some sentences with those common exception and high frequency words in. Now we're going to recap our sound from today, and our sound today is oo. So for our caption action, we're going to say stew and a brew. So what I want you to do is this. I want you to imagine you're eating stew. Now stew is traditionally an Irish meal. So my nan, who's Irish, she makes stew a lot of the time for me. So we have boiled chicken, onions, dumplings and potatoes. And it comes in like a bit of a buttery sauce. It's called stew. So I want you to imagine you're eating a plate of stew and then and a brew. And brew is another word for a cup of tea. So I want you to imagine like the Queen, you've got your saucer, You've got your, cup, your pinkies out and you're having a cup of tea. So we say stew and a brew. And again, stew and a brew. One more time, stew and a brew. Fantastic. So when you see this other card, you're going to do that exact action. Let's have a look at the letter names that make our digraph, our two letters that come together to make one sound, ooh. What are the letter names? So think about your alphabet. What are the letter names that make that ooh sound today? E and W. So when you see this side of the card, you're going to say ooh. When you see this side of the card, you're going to do your action, stew and a brew. Oh, let's see if we can do it today. Ooh. Stew and a brew. Well done if you got that right. Ooh. Oh, what we got? <gasps> stew and a brew. Fantastic. Now we're going to have a turn at segmenting and blending words with our ooh sounding. So we're going to do the first one together and we segment not once, not twice, but three times to help us blend correctly. Let's try this first one. Ch, 
U E Ng Ch U E Ng Ch U E Ng Chewing, like I was chewing my bubble gum. Chewing. Remember, if that word's too hard, you can split it into its syllables. So I could cover this bit and do the word ch, ooh, chew, and then the suffix i, ng, ing, and then put it together, chewing. Now let's see whether you can do the next one. So pause the video and see whether you can segment this word, not once, not twice, but three times. Let's see whether you're right. B, er, ooh, I, ng, b, er, u, i, ng, b, er, u, i, ng. Brewing, like my tea bag is in my cup of tea and it is brewing. My mum always says that my cup of teas are not very good because she says I don't brew it correctly. Next one, again, pause that video and see if you can segment it, not once, not twice, but three times and then blend that word. S, k, er, u. Sk, er, oo, sk, er, oo. Screw, like I had to screw a nail into my wall. Screw. Final one, and this is quite a tricky one because there's another digraph in here that's a little bit naughty. P and a H go together to make f. So let me see your teeth. F. So we don't say p. P and H go together. It's a diagraph that makes f. Let's see if you can segment it. So pause that video. Segment it not once, not twice, but three times. Let's see if you're right. N, E, F, U. N, E, F, U. N, E, F, U. Nefu. Does that sound right? No, because in this word, that U sound can make a U sound. It's quite tricky, our English language. So, n, e, f, u, n, e, f, u, n, e, f, u, nephew. So, for example, if one of my brothers had a baby boy, he would be my nephew and I would be his auntie. Nephew. Right, now you can see we can write these words. So, I'm going to hide them. Remember to pause the video. I would like you to see whether you can write the word chewing remember it's got that suffix ing on the end so pause the video can you spell the word chewing using our oo sound today that in some words also makes a u sound very tricky let's see whether you're right c h e w i n g well done if you got it right guys screw let's see if you can write the word screw using our oo sound from today remember pause the video let's see S C R E W. Well done if you got it right, guys. Next one, nephew. Remember that f being one of those naughty, naughty digraphs that doesn't sound like it looks. Nephew. Remember to pause that video. Let's see if you're right. N E P H E W. And the last one. Brewing. Miss Bailey was brewing her tea bag in her cup of tea. Brewing. So remember that ing on the end, that suffix. Brewing. Think about that bru sound. What two letters are making that? Let's have a little look. B R E W I N G. Well done. We're going to hold and write and extend our sentence. So our sentence today using our U sound, E W, is I knew that I was late. I knew that I was late. So, for our actions, we need a big capital I, because the word I is a personal pronoun and it needs to be capitalised. So, I, for new, we're going to point at our heads, I knew, because I'm knowing something. Okay, past tense, I knew. So, I knew that I, so we're going to do our I again. So, I knew that I was, we're going to do a review, and then late. We're going to point to our watches and then we can put our big full stop at the end. So let's try. I knew that I was late. Full stop. And again, I knew that I was late. Full stop. Bit quicker this time. I knew that I was late. Miss Bailey nearly forgot her action for was then. Sorry, guys. So I knew that I was late. Oh, stop. Brilliant. Now we're going to see whether we can write that sentence. Let me grab my pen. 
and by Braun. So, really, really important that we make sure our letters are on the line. So you can see I've got these little lines here. Our capital letter goes at the beginning because it's personal pronoun I and it's at the beginning of a sentence and it's got to be bigger than our lowercase letters. So I. And you can see that my letter is on the line. Knew, as in knowing, okay? I knew that I was going to be late or I knew that I was late. That's our sentence today. I knew that today would be a bad day. So for spelling the word knew, there's a special friend, n. So one of the letters before that N is a silent letter and it's a kicking K. So I knew, so we have a kicking K, we have an N and then we have our O sound that can also make a U sound, EW. I knew that. So for that we need a So we're sticking those tongues out. And it's T and a H that makes that sound. At. And I can hear my A and my T. I knew that I. So we've got another capital I, because whenever you're using that, you need the capital. I knew that I was. So we've used that quite a few times in our sentences. It's that naughty common exception word. It's not said how it's spelt. So W, and it's an A and S. I think I said in one of my earlier videos that I always remember it as was because that's how it's spelled, but we say was. I knew that I was late. Oh, now, which A is it? Is it AI? Is it AE? Is it AY? Is it a split diagraph? Well, in this instance, it's a split diagraph A for caveman Dave. So we've got an A, a little gap, because remember they're a bit too chatty. E on the end, and the last sound is late. So I have a t. I knew that I was late and I put my foot. Now we're going to extend our sentence using the conjunction when. So I'm going to get rid of this one stop. I knew that I was late when. And think about how you can extend that sentence using the conjunction when. So at what point did I know that I was late? Maybe when I looked at my watch. Maybe when my alarm went off the fifth time. So I knew that I was late when I heard the doorbell. So maybe I was supposed to be at school on time, but I slept in and so my mum had to come and ring my doorbell to wake me up. I knew that I was late when I heard the doorbell or the door ring. And again, we're making sure our letters are all the same size. I knew that I was late when I heard the door ring. Or I heard the door bell. So you think about using the conjunction when, how could you extend this sentence? At what point did you know that you were running late? Or you could challenge yourself and use other conjunctions to extend this sentence.